everyone. So this is a lifetime wellness first. There's a lot of firsts in 2020. It's a we never closed the program together. I feel like we always close the program no, together. No. Maybe it's our team and we it's do a team. panel or something <laughs> like that. So this is for a lifetime wellness first. We are ending the program together as a fireside chat. Our uh, fire, uh, we are beside our fire. We should probably turn it on. Can oh, we turn it on? Let's yeah, light it. Let's light it. Yeah. Fire <laughs> <and chat. laughs> and bring the dogs over. <laughs> and bring the, bring the dogs. Asleep. All right. Should we have this thing centered behind us or is that right? No big deal. The, 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 mm -hmm. Brittany's right. on it. <laughs> Look at that. You don't see Brittany, but you know she's doing something. More. More. A little bit more. A little bit more. Good. Good. There we go. <laughs> so this is um, uh, look fire, fire. side shots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. It looks great. Can I have my water though? All right. So. First of all, um, thank you all for being with us all weekend. It has been quite the year. It's been quite the year for us on our team, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it's been for you and really for the planet. So uh, we want to thank you for believing in us and trusting in us and um, valuing what we share and participating with us all weekend. So we really appreciate that, and uh, you know we are very committed to giving more and serving more and the first thing we should do right now is actually thank some people yes so we should thank our team our team amanda julie Brittany, ellie we want to patrick patrick of course dr patrick we want to thank our kids for putting up with us all weekend danny and annika <laughs> we want to thank jeremy and elgin for being here and filming this whole thing and making this available to people all over the world. Um, and thank Danny, because he didn't sleep the night before last, but he got 10 hours of sleep last night, so. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. Elgin, Jeremy mm -hmm. for filming. Yep. And we have to thank someone else very important. Erwin! 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 Thank for you, for doing Irwin, all of for this. For doing all of it. Yes, and for bringing, uh, bringing this whole program together. And all of our guest speakers Hugh, Bill, Kate, Joey. Um, am, who, am I, who else am I forgetting? Bill Esteb. Bill Esteb. Darren. Darren. And also, we want to thank Jose and Lara for actually being, being on, on the, the panel. panel last night. Right? Um, so. Uh, who are we thinking? Julie. Julie, and Julie, Julie, yeah, we thanked our team, and Julie rocks. She's really brought it. So we hope not only you, but your team got a lot out of this. And remember, everybody who um, uh, purchased registration, you're going to get the recordings. We're going to put them in the LWP app. Mm -hmm. um, give us a week or two, or however long um, Elgin's going to process the video, and we'll get that. Um, if you were a free streaming access one and participated, mm -hmm. you're not going to get the recordings. But if you want to purchase the recordings, you still can. All you have to do is register at the same registration link and that we use for the event, and you can get the recordings to go back over and over again to end up in your LWP app. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be talking about the new Thrival. Um, so let's start that discussion. And we hope to see you at Ticklanta mm -hmm. in Atlanta. That's where Tick is going to be. Right. In April, March, and Maple's hanging out with us. So all you Life and Sherman students, it'll be easy access. You won't have to fly. You'll be able to get there. And what a great way. We have a lot of students on the call right, on the video right now, but what a great way to start your practice. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I'm so excited that we're going to be there because with so many people graduating and, you know, invite your friends, have them there to start out right with a solid foundation. So many people, they go through school and then they get out and they don't know what to do. And there's so many practice management and all this kind of stuff, but like to have access to something like the inner circle, to get tips, not only just, you know, for marketing or selling or anything, but actually like procedurally how to run your office, how to do reassessments, how to train your team, 
all these things, it's like invaluable. So, and we're grateful to share what we've learned over the last 22 years plus years <laughs> and we certainly uh anticipate everybody from inner circle um being at mile high in june mm -hmm. there is no one that is in the inner circle that should not be in mile high mm -hmm. uh in other words everyone should be and it's going to be super exciting i'm thrilled about uh, how we put it together so the new thrival you ever hear people use this term the new normal i am not a fan <laughs> okay i am not a fan of the time term new normal as soon as i heard it i thought thrival um do we have the slides are we doing on that, Elgin? Okay. Yeah. An old paradigm is shifting. Um, we are shifting from um, the first tier of consciousness to the second. I have no doubt that what is going on right now in the world is part of that shift. Um, not that all of it is pretty, but there's a reorganization and a shifting of values and awakening to many things. And that's why there's so much polarity, that's why there's so much struggle. The new paradigm involves gratitude, involves giving, involves authenticity, involves accessing more, involves abundance and love. The currency of your practice success in any business success are those things. Mm -hmm. And making sure that in your personal life, in your business life, that the people that are going to effortlessly get attracted to you are going to be people that value those when you put those at the center of your practice. So, the new thrival. There are things that are going to be changing about business and how to conduct business and how you practice. We have seen lots of broken business models mm -hmm. falling by the wayside and we are all in for that to not be your office exactly or our office mm -hmm. and chiropractic if it's going to move forward in that new paradigm um, it is going to have to be based on being authentic and it's gonna to have to be based on service and love mm -hmm. and abundance and not maintaining a person but towards more growth people are going to want more you've seen yeah I mean so many businesses in our town are going out of business it's there's we were looking right before this at signing a contract on a new office space right the week we got shut down in March. We were this close to having double of the space and offices and storage and parking and a freestanding building like our dream in Boulder. And we kind of backed off when coat because we didn't know when we were going to be able to open again, right? And so we felt like we have this space. It's cozy. It's cute. We own it. It's, you know, less overhead. There are so many empty commercial buildings in our town. We were worried about parking. Parking's not a problem because we're the only people open on the block. So, you know, it's uh, what a difference. And my thought is that there'll be a lot more commercial space available because people, a lot of people are going to be working from home even after this, just because businesses are going to, you know, service businesses like us, we have to be there. But businesses like web development or engineering or whatever, they don't even necessarily need to have a space. They can do all of that from home and then get together and meet somewhere. Um, and so that's going to be changing. The ones that thrive, that pivot, and that made changes are going to stay open. And we hope that that's all of you. This has not been easy. If anybody can say that it's been easy, I want to talk to them <laughs> because this has not been easy. Not only have Danny and I both been working 12 hour days every single day, but we hired and trained a new associate and three new team members during this time. It has been the most insane year in practice that we've ever had, including our first year when I was pregnant with little Danny and doing the build out and having wet walls the day we opened and all that kind of stuff. So this has been probably the hardest, but also the most rewarding year that we've had in practice. 
And not only that, but the other thing is that what do we talk about as chiropractors? We talk about adapting, right? We, Donnie, for those of you that are network chiropractors or some of you aren't, has been calling about this second tier of consciousness and other people for so long that everything's gonna break down so that we can build up something new and something better where there's more connection and more compassion and more collaboration and that there's not gonna be as much bound energy but there's going to be more freedom and more free energy that so that people have access to more. But more of what? Is it commercialism? Is it overspending? Is it being in debt? No. It's that we're going to have more access to what matters most. Family, friends, love, abundance, all of those things. And that's what's coming. And man, was he right on. I didn't think it was going to be this extreme and this dramatic. But um, what, you know, we all have to hold on to. And I'm not you know, jumping into Awaken and not being in Discover, we felt it, we're there, we're in the season of Discover, we get it. And we also go back and forth between Transform and Discover. But what's coming next, I have to believe is a better world. I have to believe, because that's what gets us all through. And adapting to these current times and finding ways to do things virtually and whatever you have to do to still get to see your people, it's vital. We have gotten some of the absolute best practice members in this, you know, May to now. Some people that want more, that are, you know, the seekers or the finders or however you want, but the people that are so into it and love it, like I can think about, like Pat, you guys, like Patrick and Thomas and Jennifer and all these people that came in and said, I'm here because I want more out of my life. I'm excited. I want to, you know, I want to live more. I want, and they actually came in asking for that. Not one of them had a symptom and they love care. So we've gotten this group of amazing new people and the people that I'm seeing, maybe it's not the same numbers of new people that were coming in prior to this, but the more, more people are coming in, the more people are converting to care. The people that are coming in are converting to care and they value it more than ever before. Because if you're gonna go in and you're gonna see somebody and be face to face, you want this. So it's a bigger commitment for them and they're, they're um, all in when they come in. And the businesses that have thrived, you'll notice, pay attention, mm -hmm. like those restaurants that have closed and that were like mainstays of our area mm -hmm. and the ones that thrive pivoted made change they changed their messaging you need to do that you need to be adaptive and optimize everything is the energy that you bring to it find ways to adapt and optimize rather than that let circumstances run your life mm -hmm. and hey do not get us wrong we have had our bad days both mm -hmm. of us Fortunately for most of us, when she had her bad day, mm -hmm. I was up. When I had my bad day, she was up. When both of us did, it was like somebody on our team was up and lifted us up, right? It takes it takes a village, right? Patrick's always up. <laughs> <laughs> you can never have a bad day when you're hanging out with Patrick. <laughs> so the, the business that thrived pivoted and made change. So I will say this, of the business and industries that you could be in during mm -hmm. what's gone on in the world, being in a healing art is mm -hmm. a true gift. Yes. And being in a chiropractic setting that's independent of the uh, medical right. machine mm -hmm. is such a gift. Because I could have chosen another healing art because, you know, and but I you could have been in a different one. Right. And, right? Mm -hmm. And versus being a chiropractor. So are you patiently waiting for things to go back to normal post COVID? Don't do that. And here's why. Here's the news. You ready? If you've been waiting to things go patiently, I'm just waiting for it to be post COVID and COVID to be over. I got news for you. We're already post COVID. We're already post COVID. The world is already a different place mm -hmm. and continuing to be a different place. And we are in the reorganization. We may be in early reorganization as compared to late, but the bomb already happened, mm -hmm. right? And there are lots of factors that when we are not going to know what they are and what they mean till a decade or two decades from now, right? However, you're already in reorganization. 
and you have trained your whole life. If you're a chiropractor watching this, most likely you have trained your whole life to have higher adaptive strategies than most people, mm -hmm. right? So you are in the place of how do I adapt and how do I optimize? This is a once in a lifetime platform to re-examine everything about your life your personal life, your professional life, how you run your office, what you put your focus on enjoying. And haven't we seen that? Like, these people mm -hmm. move and... So many people move. But hey, a lot of you, the mass exodus from out of California to Austin. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, like, like, I have five friends that did that. <laughs> and people are coming here from California too. Yeah. But right. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. every... And understand this. You probably notice this in your practice, that your practice members are reassessing mm -hmm. their life. Mm -hmm. They're moving. Their jobs are changing. Some of them, we've had practice members that have lost jobs, ones that are Got like, new jobs, new jobs yeah. or getting relocated. Everything is up for change. When there's more instability and there's more change, what you bring to that is your adaptability and how do I optimize? Everyone you take care of is also doing that. Mm -hmm. And for them, um, they, need, they need that definition of health that you have had. And that is changing you know, of, of optimal physical, mental, and spiritual well-being, not just the absence of disease and symptoms. They're looking at health. Health... There's never been a time in my life that health has been such a priority to people. Right. Like it's in the media all day, right. every day. Not necessarily from the perspective we want, but it makes health and well-being top of mind. So capitalize that, not by saying you like the cure for COVID, don't do something dumb like that, mm -hmm. okay? But by saying things about optimizing your life and you know how to can reduce stress and how you can you know maybe uh, feel better when you're sitting at the computer all day like use that focus and this is all changing dramatically in your favor if you're a wellness oriented um, chiropractor yeah, the other thing I'm gonna say is and, and this may be a little controversial because I know some people like to stir the pot but and for those of you that are from other countries other than the US we just want to say we're sorry <laughs> um, so we're sorry. For the US. And not all of us are crazy. Um, and, um, but also that, you know, people have different perspectives. And so you may have one perspective. One of the things that I never liked is when chiropractors bashed medicine and talked about how bad medicine was and this is how many prescription drugs and people are dying. You know what? Talk about how great chiropractic is. Talk about what's right about chiropractic. Don't fight the machine. You don't need to fight the machine. Have your messaging, get it even more clear about adaptability and strategies to reduce stress and how to feel and function better and, all, and wanting more and all those things that that's your message and that's your brand. Not what something else is and how that's wrong. And holding multiple perspectives of being able to hold the space that there are some people that think totally different than you. You know, I talked about not wanting to be on Facebook because of how toxic it gets, how toxic it is. But some people that are even on the on this um, video right now or on, on Zoom think exactly the opposite that you think, exactly the opposite. And you know what? That doesn't make them wrong, and that doesn't make them bad. That just makes them different. And so how can we move forward with grace and with love and to see other people's side of things? And when people come into your office right now, some people are terrified. Love them. They need a place to go. We have so many people that we're the only people they see other than picking up their groceries at the grocery store. You know, make every second count. The other thing I'll say, and some of you might not agree with this as well, make your visits as energy efficient and short as possible. This is a practice tip that we hear from malpractice insurance. Once again, it might be different in your state or your country or your province or whatever, but under 15 minutes, people have less exposure to COVID if they're in a room with you for under 15 minutes. So if someone tests positive that was in your office, 
you may not have to close your office down if people have masks and gloves and all the precautions or whatever. But this is the situation. You want to make your office visits as energy efficient and as short and concise as you possibly can. And that goes for initial visits. Shorten them up, tighten reavows up, tighten everything up. People don't want to be there for an hour. I know everybody thinks they do because you're the magical healing guru genie, but people don't want to be there. They want to be in and they want to be out. They want to get their nervous system tuned up and they want to go back out to what, back to home, I guess it is now, not out into the world. But we want to make it short and sweet, love them up as soon as we can, make every second count and be as present as we can with them. So one of the uh, important things when there's change is how do you find the gift in it, right? So there's been lots of challenges in the world and there's lots of gifts within all of that. Um, I was reading an article about all the challenges that are happening in the new normal and during this time and all of this. And I thought, you know what? Let's think about what gifts are in that. Mm -hmm. So it was, these are the challenges for businesses. So I thought, you know, like leadership is going to be challenged. Mm -hmm. Well, how about this is a calling for leadership to rise up mm -hmm. and to express this gift in a different way. As a chiropractor, you're a leader. You're a leader for a person's health and well-being. You're a leader of your team. You may be a leader of some kind of uh, educational events in your community. Mm -hmm. You may be seen as a leader in a something like the Chamber of Commerce or something like that in your, your area. your church or your synagogue. Right? Or, yeah. So what are the gifts of leadership during this? Um, leadership is going to be transforming businesses and organizations. It may not be businesses. It might be a club or a group, right, or your church clubs or organizations from machines <laughs> moving them from machines to living organisms think of your office as a living dynamic community and an organism it's got to be agile it's got to be responding to growing um changes and destructions they're going to be more like look january 1st is not going to like magically happen and there's going to be no more covid instabilities there's gonna be other things that happen i know like you're hoping this is like the last thing in december last few weeks and yep done. and we're done it's not going to be the case there's going to be other destructive forces or instabilities and we know the more adaptive you are the better you can use the instability as an as an opportunity to have growth mm -hmm. so um this will be opportunities to stretch you and develop new skill sets there are so many people in the inner circle that like, wow, I've never seen them do a webinar. Mm -hmm. And now they did one. Right. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, they now like, well, I or guess. Or really cool, creative, like Jackie's Gratitude Rocks. Yeah. And, you know, or like Lara did the little messaging and around her office. And like, you see all these cool things that people are doing to try to spread the love and create some fun, positive energy for people. So as you bring gifts of leadership, you know, share them in the inner circle so you can get, like we can support each other. Like I saw things that other people did that mm -hmm. I didn't think of. We're like, Patrick, you're doing that. Patrick, you're doing the movie theater. Yeah. <laughs> All right, business. Um, Biggest business gifts will be to create new forms of value or demonstrate value in ways that will make your prospective new patients never be without you. People are going to have and have had more distractions mm -hmm. and things throwing them off their good health habits because they have different priorities. So the gift for you is... How can I find ways to create more value than I've had before so that our practice members would never be without us, mm -hmm. right? I can't keep doing things the way I did them in 2019. There's got to be new gifts that I can bring to our care, to the people's experience that they like love and will never be without us, okay? So find ways to do that and there's no like magic list. I know you're thinking, well, Danny, what's the list of things to do to bring more value? 
This is not a magic list, but as we do things, we're going to share them and you do that with us also, right? Mm -hmm. So the biggest gift is that you have to bring ways to create more value for your service. I've had people say, well, what do you mean? Like just adjusting the people with the best chiropractic care that there is on the planet's not enough? No, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. You as an organization, as a business, have to find ways to bring more value to the experience of your care. Mm -hmm. um, operational gift. You wanna go with this one? It's uh, to sustain infrastructure and find ways to attain growth while keeping costs efficient. So we could be in that new building and Danny kinda of still wants to be in that new building. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vacuums are us right now, so it's a little depressing. Cause I'm like, it could have been a lives for us versus, you know, <laughs> life for all of you versus vacuums are us. But there's a reason, right? There's gonna be another space. And in the same way, it's like, you have to figure out ways to cut your overhead, to run lean and to be super efficient. Just like I said with, our, with your entrainments or adjustments, if you trim two minutes off, that's better. You know, if you do everything you can to tighten in, don't overspend, you know, don't, um, you know, make sure you have the right amount of staff. Don't get rid of your staff. If you have staff, keep them around. Just make sure everybody's working and is super energy efficient because you're going to want to run tight and you're going to run lean regardless of what you're making or not, what you're not making. And so you want to find a way to still grow and, get, and reach your goals, but to be cost and energy efficient. What's, look, at, look at everything. What have you been doing that's working? Keep doing that. What have you been doing that's not working? And I'm not saying like it just didn't work once. How do you either reinvent it or cut it and keep doing more of what's working? So it's energy efficiency, running lean, keeping your overhead low, and just doing the you know doing what you can to see growth and abundance and prosperity for you and your team and your practice members and that's a gift because all businesses need to run operationally efficient mm -hmm. so here's an example of that all right um again being cost effective and being smart our website we were spending a thousand dollars a month that was the monthly fee to have this with that company i was very happy we actually were better off than any website we had mm -hmm. before and then we, we were spending $1,000 a month on AdWords. That was the budget they set, we just set it. And my sense was, this is not being managed. I wasn't mm -hmm. getting reports. I don't know that money was going. Is this being effective? So um, we had someone assess it. We shifted to perfect patients. Mm -hmm. Instead of $1,000 a month, it was $500 a month. Wow, $500 saved, mm -hmm. great. I can, keep, I can use that to keep our team employed. Right? right. Then ad, ad spend, they were looking at the ad spend and getting monthly reports, listening to the recordings of the calls, seeing when the ad spend, this was the cost per click and saying, we're going to shift them to this and we're not getting enough response out of that. So we're going to run the ads this way. That's being cost effective. It's mm -hmm. looking at it so that you can optimize what's there, not that you stop running ads on Google. Right, and right? it's data-driven versus <coughs> you're just throwing money into the wind and you don't know what's really working and what's not. It's looking at your PVI. It's looking at, I mean, when COVID was going on and we were closed for those six weeks in Colorado, we uh, put on a seminar, of course, um, but we virtually. also <laughs> virtually two of them actually two of them. <laughs> we also went through every personal bill and credit card and you know like what were we paying for cable? What were we? Because it was a great time to do that. Not because we were in scarcity mode, but because we said, okay, how do we get efficient? When are we going to able to open back up? We kept our team even before the PPP money came in. We kept all of our employee, all of our employees. We didn't lay anybody off, and we kept paying them to work from home because we felt that strongly about not furloughing or letting our employees go. So some people had to, and I get that. But we were like, we will use our savings to do that because we wanted to make sure that people could pay their rent, have food on their table, all that kind of stuff. Because. Some people that were unemployed weren't getting their unemployment. So we were like, what can we do? These are our people, they are our family. We wanna keep them employed. And it was a stretch for us, but
but we did it. And so we went through every single line item on our bills and said, do we really need cable? Do we really need these things? What do we need at the office? Is this working? Is it not working? Do we want to keep it around? And we went through all of that and leaned everything up and it made a difference. And we still have more to do with that. And if we cut some of those things, we're able to get maple. Exactly. We got maple. Come on. Dude, you know me. I was cutting everything. <laughs> okay. If there's a dog involved, it all gets cut. But being a, a, a gift, an operational gift during mm -hmm. this, I mean, you can say finances are a challenge, mm -hmm. or you can say there's a gift. How can we be um, cost efficient, which means you got to look at your data and your stats and see what's effective, what's not. All right, what events are event, and what's effective for Darren may not be effective for us. Right. And what we do that's effective may not be effective for Joey. Uh, she might be in a different area. We're all in different, you know, we're mm -hmm. all going down the same rapids, but we're not in the same boat, and we're not in the same place on the rapids, mm -hmm. okay? So that's why the group mastermind can be effective. So, but the gift of being uh, cost efficient, and then the thing is, once things, you know, uh, raise um as as the as the uh tide improve, as right? the as tide the economic as, as as and as the tide rises as the mm -hmm. tide rises don't go spend more no continue to be tight. cost efficient exactly right? yeah use that data it's a gift that you'll be able to use later and continue to increase your profitability human resource the biggest human resource gift all right Human resources are interesting right now. I will tell you, mm -hmm. in all my years, it was the most difficult time interviewing I ever had. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never thought I would hire someone virtually that I had not met. That lived in Florida. That lived in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and they relocated. I bet you that Brittany, who works at our front desk, Never thought she would take a job, never seeing the business or meeting person. Not having a car, not having a place to live, and just jumping on a plane with a suitcase and coming to work for I us. mean, so yeah. that's the, like, <laughs> li literally. And Ellie, like, I, again, I took me months to find Ellie. And go through hundreds of people. Go through hundreds for someone that would be, and I never had to work that hard to put that much energy. In human resources, mm -hmm. challenges with human resources is there's a scramble for talent. There's a gift in that, mm -hmm. which is there's a gift and an opportunity for you to become a better employer. There's a gift for you to find ways that you're going to keep your members, your team members motivated, keep them engaged, keep them inspired, and you grow as a organization mm -hmm. to inspire your, your the people that are working for you that they will never... Um, want to be without a position with you that they're not attracted to other things because they love uh the passion you have the energy you bring and your mission that's something that is an opportunity for you to grow and a gift to give as right. as an employer okay <laughs> biggest service gift is uh, to keep your practice members focused on their long-term outcomes and goals. Mm -hmm. So for people to see that being in your office and getting spinal care, what that's going to look like in their future, for their future. And we talked about it this weekend. You see it across the board. I'm sure you guys are seeing it. People saying things like, I don't know what I would have done without this care. Or like when we reopened after a month and a half, Please never close again. Who do I need to write letters to? You know, that they're seeing this as a long-term output for their life. That they're seeing that, like, what's their future like because they're more adaptable. They can manage stress better. Um, they feel and function better. Their body's working better because they have a good nerve supply and a healthy spine. So important. That's so different than I have a headache and my back hurts. And not that those things aren't important because that's kind of some of the things that come out of all this, right? But that it's bigger for them and for their life. And so keeping them focused on that instead of just in this like short term, like being internal of like we got to hide in our house and, you know, but like what does beyond this look like for me and for my health and for my well-being in my life? So as a service provider in a service-based industry, focusing 
the gifts that you have as a long-term practice member, meaning what we've talked about all weekend, mm -hmm. helping people become lifetime wellness practice members and focus on that value for what you do rather than the short-term benefit because it costs more money to get a new patient than to keep a current practice member. Mm -hmm. And to keep current practice members, you have to more than ever focus on the long-term value of continued chiropractic care mm -hmm. in your communication, for your blog posts, to your videos, to your emails, to your table side conversations, to your to presence, your presence mm -hmm. to your whiteboard, mm -hmm. like everything you do focus on the long-term value of that, of that service. And that's a gift. Don't just mm -hmm. fall back into the same routine and expect everything to be mm -hmm. sunshine and roses. Mm -hmm. Do not think, sorry to burst your bubble, oh, ball's gonna drop December 31st, we're gonna go back to the same routine and it's just gonna be sunshine and roses. Mm -hmm. That's not gonna be the case. That would be pseudo awakened. Yes. <laughs> that sounds really good though. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds sunshine good. and roses sounds really good. All right, it can be sunshine and roses, yeah. It's going to take you putting energy into it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen without you putting some intention mm -hmm. and presence into that. Okay? So that means investing in new talent, investing in new technology, innovating your business. Um, we're overstaffing our office with the anticipation of the flow, the flood that's going to come. I have no doubt mm -hmm. um, that we're training at altitude and that when the um disney half marathon comes we're going to be more than ready right right because we'll <laughs> we're, we're going to be at sea, sea level, level. <laughs> so you know train your company to come back better rather than get bitter invest in new technologies innovate your business business change your company um if you've got to change the company culture um branding the branding impact it, it has on uh on your customers your employees for the better, find ways to pivot and innovate to deliver more. Um, so you can help your new prospective patients, your new patients, your practice members thrive more and be stronger and assist them to thrive. Mm -hmm. Of all the things that you could be doing and all the times in the history of the planet, in this incarnation, you ended up as a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. Or you ended up working in a chiropractic office. You could have been doing lots of things in 2020. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I don't think it's an accident, there's only on purposes, that somehow you found your way that during this, you're working in, owning, associating, whatever, or a chiropractic student at this time. Mm -hmm. Be grateful. Be grateful to be in a health and wellness time where people are so in need of what it is that you do with your hands and the message of your philosophy that like this is what people, of all the things people could do for their health and get for their health during this, mm -hmm. like you just got to raise. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to raise because people are going to value what you do mm. more. So this is a time that you're more needed with a particular skill set that so few people have. Mm -hmm. Right? Which means you just have to rise up to that calling. Mm -hmm. And that takes some courage. It takes some bravery. Um, it takes... A little bit of elbow grease. Yes. <laughs> you can say that. Right? So be grateful rather than be um, all, you know, all well. Mm -hmm. You trained your whole life for this. <laughs> <laughs> you train chiropractic school, reading green books, going to chiropractic seminars, doing fire walks at Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. whatever it is that you did up till now, you've trained for this circumstance. You just didn't know you were training for it. Mm. So all those gifts that you learned, this is when 
you can get shine. the opportunity to shine. Mm -hmm. You've trained your whole life. For those that rise up to the challenge, this will be your greatest hour. You just have to choose whether you're going to let the circumstance bring your energy state down or you're going to use the circumstances as an opportunity to rise up. And people need you to rise up. Think of all the people in your community and think of all the people that come to see you during each week, how much they need you. This past week, I had a person in our office whose mom, uh, the person had come in in extreme pain, not able to walk a few weeks prior. Um, she's healing well and making huge strides. And during Thanksgiving weekend, um, I asked her how her Thanksgiving was when she came in on Monday. And she had spent the weekend, um, her mom passed away during Thanksgiving weekend. Her mom was in a long-term care memory facility. She didn't die of COVID. She died, you know, during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, she was in a long-term care facility, and because of COVID, she hadn't seen her mom in a while because she couldn't go in. And she got the opportunity to see her mom for a few hours. They, they let her in or however they did it. And through tears, she told me how grateful she was for seeing us, for coming to our office, for the care we provided, and that if she, if she hadn't started care the few weeks prior or a month prior, whatever it was, she wouldn't have handled all that as well. People need what it is that you have. You've trained to, sh to in certain skill sets. You've got to show up with them so that people can rise up and you can help them do that. You've seen how many people have told you mm -hmm. that this was like so necessary for them. Exactly. You know? Yeah, that it's vital. So we're grateful mm -hmm. to help you. We're grateful to serve you. We're grateful to take care of you uh, to whatever day degree we're contributing to you. Grateful for that you participated in this all weekend. Um, and we want to thank all of you. Um, make this your finest hour. Uh, we appreciate you. If you'd like to do that one-to-one -one mentoring with us, go for it. Slides up. We'll do a first phone call just to see anything that you need. We'll talk about just as a free 30 minutes and talk to us. We hope to see you again soon live 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 <laughs> um at mile high and before then um uh in uh in, in atlanta um take a picture of this take a moment take a picture post this in some other social media not the inner circle mm -hmm. post this take a picture of it and then or a screenshot or whatever it is and tell people hey Doctors Danny and Rochelle and everybody in the tell them that you're going to help them in the inner circle mm -hmm. by mentoring them, um, and this will be everything that they get and they can uh, use that QR code in the post. Mm -hmm. um, let's help more people, and we look forward to seeing you in Ticklana. And um, we want to thank you for the most valuable resource is time. We want to thank you for sharing your time with us, and we hope that you got so much out of this weekend because. Our goal with having our staff here and us being here, you know, all weekend long is that you could help more people and that you could have a better life, not just from that you're more efficient and you're making, but that you can enjoy your life more because you have these systems and you make things easier and you make practice more fun. Thank you for trusting us. We'll see you in Atlanta. That's the savings. Those that register for before Monday, before Sunday at midnight, mm -hmm. it's uh, a savings. It's going to be, it's 250 for doctors. I think it's one or 150 or something for mm -hmm. students. It will be more than that after, after Sunday at midnight. Mm -hmm. So 
um, go ahead and pull the trigger. You know you want to be there. We're doing it on that coast because mm -hmm. we're near Life in Sherman and even the people from Europe, if you can come to the U.S., <laughs> okay, you can, you could fly, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we won't be virtual, I can guarantee mm -hmm. you, it will be live, it's not going to be a virtual, virtual program, so we will see you there, love you all, happy holidays, and thank you to mm -hmm. our team, and thank, thank you. you to all of you.